Hey everyone, I'm Karen T and welcome back to another episode of Cookies and Crime. It's officially fall, which boggles my mind. I don't know where this year went and a part of me is kind of sad that summer's over already. Maybe because I didn't really get to have my hot girl summer, so I was anticipating that happening at some point, and it just never did. But you know what? I'm ready for pumpkin spice lattes and hot chocolates and Halloween. I feel like this is the first year where people jumped on it really early, but it's because COVID has ruined everything. Like, at least give us an extended holiday. So I totally get why. For me, I just need the weather to get colder. I mean, I live in Portland, so it should be doing that soon. But I would say I'm already there because the other day I stepped into a Safeway and saw all the candy and all the decorations. So I was like, wow, it's time. Out of all places, Safeway was the place that I felt like Halloween has started. So I already have my list of cookies that I'm going to make for Halloween, which I'm super excited about. They are going to be cookies inspired by my favorite Halloween movies. Can you guys guess what they are? It's pretty typical of everyone's favorite Halloween movies. But let me know what your favorite Halloween movies are and I can incorporate them into my cookies too. I have a feeling we're gonna be on the same page though. Also, since I love Halloween, your favorite movie is probably my favorite movie by default because I just love Halloween. But I would love to know in general. So the cookies I'm going to be making in this episode are going off the theme of the last episode, which is just living room furniture inspired cookies. The cookies are of macrame wall hangings. I don't know if these are still a popular thing to have in your home. I don't actually have any, but they're really cute. And I think they're a really good DIY home decoration thing. And I love DIYs. I'm actually trying to make a wall hanging of my own. So I bought these huge balls of yarn. This one came apart to make the wall hangings. I've been waiting on like this one piece that I ordered on Etsy that has not come in weeks. So I'm waiting for that, but I'm hoping to make that to replace this because this was a gift from my boyfriend's ex-girlfriend and I want it out of the house. Not because she bought it for him, but it's just ugly. Anyway. The case I'm going to be sharing today is a little bit different. It didn't happen in the US, it happened in New Zealand. It's kind of a short case, but I went into the details of one of the aspects of the case because I find it really interesting. It happened in the 1800s, so it was a very different time where they had very different services for certain things. So I find it really interesting just compared to where we are today. And with that, it's time for Cookies and Crime. This is the story of Minnie Dean, the first and only woman to be hanged in New Zealand. Minnie Dean was born September 2nd, 1844 in Greenock, Scotland. Her father, John, was a railway engineer. Her mother, Elizabeth Swan, died of cancer in 1857. It is unknown when she arrived in New Zealand, but by the early 1860s, she was living in Invercargill with two young children. When the gold rush died down, the couple turned to farming, but had financial issues. The family moved to Winton, where Charles Dean took up pig farming while Minnie began to earn money by taking in unwanted children in exchange for payment. This is known as baby farming. In an era when there were few methods of contraception and when childbirth outside marriage was frowned upon, there were many women wishing to discreetly send their children away for adoption, so Minnie Dean did not lack customers. Baby farming is the historical practice of accepting custody of an infant or child in exchange for payment in late Victorian Britain and, less commonly, in Australia and the United States. Some baby farmers adopted children for lump sum payments, while others cared for infants for periodic payments. Infanticide was also an issue during this era. Infanticide, which I think we all can guess what that is, is the intentional killing of infants or offspring. It is now mostly illegal, apart from some countries. When I read this fact, it blew my mind that this just wouldn't be illegal across the board. I could maybe see this being a thing if the infant had some terminal illness that just left it in pain, but it's pretty crazy. Infanticide was a widespread practice throughout human history that was mainly used to dispose of unwanted children. Its main purpose was saving resources from being spent on weak or disabled offspring. Unwanted infants were normally abandoned to die of exposure, but in some societies they were manually killed. Most Stone Age human societies routinely practice infanticide, and estimates of children killed by infanticide in the Mesolithic and Neolithic eras vary from 15 to 50%. 
Infanticide continued to be common in most societies after the historical era began, including ancient Greece, ancient Rome, ancient China, ancient Japan, Aboriginal Australia, Native Americans, and Native Alaskans. Infanticide became forbidden in Europe and the Near East during the first millennium. Christianity forbade infanticide from its earliest times. The practice ceased in Arabia in the 7th century after the founding of Islam, since the Quran prohibits infanticide. So I went down a rabbit hole about infanticide because I just had no idea how widespread it was back in the day. Even though it was back in the day, it's like, oh, okay, so killing babies was just a thing. With a biological or anthropological, is that even a word? With a biological perspective, it kind of makes sense, right? Like back in the stone age, there were a lack of resources or you had to fight a lot harder to get resources. So if you had an infant that you couldn't take care of, you would just like off it. But then Christians came along and were like, killing babies is bad. So I just find it really interesting that that was the point where humans decided that killing was bad or at least killing infants was bad because if you think about it there is no physical good and bad like no ultimate good and bad that exists in the world things just are but it's humans that make something good or bad so yeah a little a little food for thought for you infanticide of male babies had become uncommon in china by the ming dynasty though female infanticide remains common today during the period of company rule in India, the East India Company attempted to eliminate infanticide but were only partially successful, and female infanticide in some parts of India still continues. That is just crazy to me, like, till this day, they are still doing that. And to only females, like, it just to this day blows my mind that there is no value given to females. Like, if anything, you should be keeping us around, and the other one, like, do what you will with it, you know, but we can survive without the male counterpart. So these places have it backwards. Parental infanticide researchers have found that mothers are far more likely than fathers to be the perpetrators of neonaticide, I think I'm saying that right, and slightly more likely to commit infanticide in general. Neonaticide is basically like infanticide, but killing of the infant within 24 hours of birth I don't know why it's different or if it's a more common thing, but there's probably some science behind this that I just really don't know. Apparently it's a thing that is more prevalent in mothers. But back to our story, throughout the 1880s and 1890s, Dean placed a series of anonymous advertisements in newspapers across the South Island. They read, quote, a respectable married woman wants to adopt a child, comfortable home in the country, unquote. At any one time, there could be up to nine children under the age of three in her care. She received payment either weekly or in a lump sum. Infant mortality was a significant problem in New Zealand at this time. As such, a number of children under Dean's care died of various illnesses. In March 1889, a six-month-old child had died of convulsions. In October 1891, a six-week-old baby had perished from cardiovascular and respiratory ailments and a boy allegedly drowned under her care in 1894, and she hid the body in her garden. A coroner's inquest was held, and Dean was not held responsible for the deaths due to universally poor hygiene standards, even at childbirth itself. Nevertheless, the community came to mistrust Dean, and rumors of mistreatment circulated. Children under Dean's care allegedly went missing without explanation. At the time, lax childcare legislation meant that Dean did not have to keep records of the children she agreed to take in, so proving that the children had disappeared was difficult. So I'm gonna take a break here to talk about our cookie word of the day, and if you're new to cookies and crime, in the middle of the case, I like to talk about cookies so that you guys can learn a little bit more about that along the way. So the word of the day is scribe. So this is a scribe tool. This tool is used to help smooth out icing or manipulate the icing on the cookie. So this is my scribe tool right here. It is pretty tiny. It's just very handheld and I'll get closer. So this is what it looks like. It's basically just a plastic handle of some sort and a really sharp edge here. It's really helpful when you're trying to pop air bubbles or trying to move your royal icing around, like maybe closer to the edges if you didn't pipe all the way there. Or if your royal icing is a little bit stiffer and you want to smooth it out like flood, then you can use this and just like shake it until it's all smooth. And if worst comes to worst, you know, this makes 
a pretty good weapon. I've dropped this on the floor before and I have wooden floors and on the way down it spun and just like landed straight in the wooden board. So definitely be careful with this tool. If you don't have this tool, you could also just use toothpicks. That's what I used to use before I bought this. But these are really cheap. You can buy them in like a three pack or even more on Amazon for super cheap. They come in different colors. Also some bakers also sell these and they make it really cute. Like they have different beads and different designs on it. I'm just a basic bee right now with my hot pink one that I got from Amazon. But yeah, that is a scribe tool. And it's my little baby. I play around too much. <laughs> so yeah, that's their cookie word of the day. Now back to our story. The death of the baby brought closer surveillance. In 1892, Christchurch police took charge of a three week old child that Dean had adopted from its single mother for $25. Police traced Dean to a boarding house and found the child in very dirty clothes and being fed from a bottle containing sour and curdled milk. The baby's mother said she could scarcely recognize her child as it had altered for the worse in the two days that Dean had looked after it. The police thought that they had probably saved the baby's life. They remained suspicious and kept Dean under surveillance. In 1893, the commissioner of police wrote to the Minister of Justice with renewed concerns about Dean's activities. In 1985, Dean was seen boarding a train carrying a young baby and a hat box, but left the same train without the baby and only the hat box. As railway porters last testified, the hat box was suspiciously heavy. A woman, Jane Hornsby, came forward claiming to have given her granddaughter, Eva, to Dean, and clothes identified as belonging to this child were found at Dean's residence, but Dean could not produce the child herself. A search along the railway line found no sign of the child. Her garden was dug up and three bodies were uncovered. An inquest found that one child, Eva, had died of suffocation, and one, later identified as one-year-old Dorothy Edith Carter, had died from an overdose of laudamum, medicine used back in the day to sedate children when they were being unruly. They did some wild things back then, like giving a child medicine when they just were too much to handle. And we thought iPad parents were bad. Imagine a parent giving their child medication to sedate them when they just don't want to deal with them anymore. iPad children are still pretty crappy though. The cause of death for the third child was not determined. Dean was charged with their murder. Before Dean's trial and execution, four other women had been tried and sentenced to death. In each case, these sentences were commuted to life imprisonment. In each case, child murder was the offense. On the morning of August 12, 1895, Dean was hanged in Invercargill. A crowd swarmed outside the prison walls even though nothing could be seen or heard. The sheriff asked whether she had any final words. No, said Dean except that I am innocent. As she fell through the trap door, newspapers reported that she cried out, oh God, let me not suffer. Dean became the first and only woman to be hanged in New Zealand history. After her death, Minnie Dean became part of New Zealand folklore. Local legend even claimed that no plants would grow on her grave. Los Angeles-based singer-songwriter Helen Henderson, who was raised in Southland, recalled that Minnie was like the boogeyman of our town when I was a kid. If you were giving cheek to your mom or being naughty, you would be told, you better watch out or I'll send you off to Minnie Dean's farm and you'll never be heard from again. That's pretty dark for a parent to use, but honestly, I would probably do the same thing. Like that would scare the crap out of me if I heard that as a child. Her story exposed the stark realities of paid childcare and the lack of choice that many women faced in this period. That is the story of Minnie Dean. So I hope you enjoyed this Cookies and Crime. Next time it will be October 1st, which I'm super excited about. And it will be a special episode and I can't wait to see you guys then. And as usual, I'm late to a dance class right now. So if you like this, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you haven't yet, subscribe and I will see you guys next time. Bye.